Hey, welcome to day eight of unit five. And before we get started, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a reminder about the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. Um, and I have it here defined in a little bit of a different way. Um, so it, let's let f of t be a continuous function on the interval from a to a function g of x or some value g of x. Now that could be a constant, but it could also be a function. Just keep that in mind. Oops. Okay. Then, this, the derivative of the integral, notice that a is a constant. If f is continuous on the interval from a to g of x, then the integral of f is the antiderivative of f, whatever that may be. So, We get from the first fundamental, first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, the antiderivative of f of t evaluated from a to g of x, which is. Notice that I keep writing everything that was in the original problem until I've used it. The derivative of f of t evaluated at g of x. minus f of t evaluated at a. Now, this is just a number. It's a constant. It was some function with a number plugged in. That number was a in this case. It's a constant. So when I take the derivative of this stuff, that's going to become zero. That's why it doesn't matter what that bottom number is in the integral as long as it's a constant. All right, now the derivative of this, the derivative of an antiderivative is the original function, the function from which the antiderivative came, which was f. That's f with g of x inside of it. But I just took the derivative of a function with a function inside. I've got to use the chain rule, the derivative of g of x. And that goes to zero. So this equals f of g of x times g prime of x. Okay. Now, what we're going to use in the first part of today's lesson is u substitution but with um, a definite integral. So we've looked at u substitution with an indefinite integral. We've looked at definite integrals. So now we're going to combine the two. So if I can write or I have some function I have some function with bounds a to b. Notice this is a function with a function inside, and that inside function is somewhere else. Its derivative shows up elsewhere. Okay. Then I can make a u substitution by letting u equal excuse me, let u equal g of x then the derivative of u is the, der der the derivative of g of x. Okay. You know, all of this gets replaced with du, and this gets replaced with u. So this becomes the integral f of u du. However, my bounds need to change. They need to be in terms of u. So I get g of a to g of b. 
And that's just u substitution with a definite integral. Okay. When I evaluate the du, my bounds have to be in terms of u. Initially, my bounds were in terms of x. Here, my bounds have to be in terms of u. Great multiple choice question. All right, let's get started. Okay, so to get started, we're going to rattle off three quick examples uh, using u substitution and definite integrals. So I know that these are a definite integral because there are bounds, which means I'm not going to get something with a plus c. I'm going to get an actual number, a real number. Okay? Now, in all three of these cases, I'm going to need to use u substitution. Because looking at that, I say to myself, I don't know how to integrate that. Okay? So this is a really easy one because the u is obviously the thing with x to the fourth because its derivative is a degree less, which shows up right there. So let's let u equal x to the fourth plus 2, then du is 4x cubed dx. Now, the x cubed dx is the thing I want, so I've got to do something with that 4. So we'll divide by 4. Now I have something I can substitute in. So we end with the integral, 1 fourth the integral of u du. Now what I have to do is change my bounds. Here, 1 and 2 are in terms of x. So x equals 1 and x equals 2. But here, I need them to be in terms of u. But I said, let's let u equal x to the fourth plus 2. So we have a definition for u. So when x is 1, u is 3. When x is 2, u is 18. Now, this is pretty easy to solve. Oops. We'll have 1 fourth, 1 half, u squared from 3 to 18. So we get um, 18 squared over 8 minus 9 squared over 8. And that's a fine answer. I'm okay with you leaving it like that. Don't get the problem wrong because you squared something wrong or divided something wrong. Okay. Unless it's a calculator portion of the test, and then I expect that to be a number. Just push your buttons right. All right, here. There's only one thing that you could possibly be, because there's only one, there's only one expression that's inside of something else. It's 2x plus 1. So let's let u be 2x plus 1 then du is 2 dx. Now, I don't have a 2 dx. I just have 1 dx. So we'll get rid of the 2 by dividing both sides. So when I go to make my substitution, I have a 1 half, the square root of u du, but I need to change my bounds. Well, when x is 0, u is 1. And when x is excuse me, when x is 4, u is 9. Now, the integral of the square root of u is u to the 3 halves times 2 thirds. All right, now follow me here. We're going to evaluate from 1 to 9. This can be kind of tricky. We'll have 1 half times the square root of 9 is 3 cubed is 27, divided by 3 is 9, and the 2's cancel. Oh, excuse me, we're not going to cancel the 2's. So let's see, square root of 9 is 3, cubed is 27, divided by 3 is 9, so 2 over 9. Minus 1 so that's just 2 over 3. Did I do that right? Let's see. The square root of 9 is 3 cubed 
is 27 divided by 3 is 9. Eighteen. Sorry. I get nine times two. So this really simplifies to nine minus a third. Okay, last example. This one's a little bit trickier because there's not something inside of something else, right? However, remember, I'm looking for something whose derivative shows up elsewhere. The derivative of x is 1. Sort of shows up, but it doesn't really help me with the natural log of x. But what's the derivative of natural log of x? It's 1 over x, which shows up. So let's let u equal the natural log of x. du is 1 over x dx, which shows up exactly here, 1 over x dx. So my integral becomes, oops, um, u, natural log of x, times du, which was the dx over x, or the 1 over x times dx. Now i got to change my bounds. When x is 1, u is the natural log of 1, which is 0. When x is e, u is 1. Now this... I know right off the top of my head without even doing is one half. Now, how did I do that so quickly? I remember that the integral just represents the area under the curve, and I thought about this as a function with a slope of 1. So from 0 to 1, the area under the curve is just half the unit square which is one half. Now, of course, you could go through here and say that this is really uh, u squared over two and evaluate that from zero to one. And you plug in one and you get a half and you plug in zero and you get zero. You're gonna get the same answer, but you might as well do it quicker, right? Okay. All right, so this next little uh, example here is sort of a it's introducing a shortcut um, using the knowledge that this function is even now how do I know this function is even well because I've been doing this for a long time and I know that um, the degree is even and there are no other terms with X it's just shifted up three so this function has to be symmetric about the y-axis now that means look at the picture if I'm integrating from, say, negative a to a, whatever this area is, it's going to be equivalent to this area. So for an even function, the integral from negative a to a of f of x dx is the same as the integral from of 2 times the integral from 0 to a of f of x dx. And that's exactly how I'm going to integrate this. 2 from 0 to 4, x to the 4th plus 3 dx. Now, could I integrate it the other way? Absolutely. It just might take me a little bit longer. Okay. So, the integral here be x to the 5th over 5 plus 3x, 2 from 0 to 4, 4 to the 5th is 1024, over 5 plus 12 times 2. When I plug in 0, I get 0. So my answer is this. Now, that's nice and easy because I didn't have to plug anything. I didn't have to plug the lower bound in. Right? And all because I knew the function was even. Now, 
What about the case, the function being odd? If the function is odd, and I'm integrating from, say, negative a to a, then this will come out negative, and this will come out positive, but they'll be the same shape. In other words, they'll be exactly the same. They'll be equivalent. So, for an odd function, the integral from negative a to a is 0. No need to integrate. Okay. So, a great example would be sine. If I say, what's the integral of sine from negative pi to pi? Your answer is zero. What's the integral of cosine from negative pi to pi? Cosine's even. So it's just two times the integral of cosine from zero to pi. All right. So to finish things off for today, we're going to um, uh, do some rapid fire examples. Okay? Uh, I didn't leave a lot of space for these because there's not a lot of work that needs to be done. Right? This is just fundamental theorem of calculus part two. Okay? Bottom's a constant, the top's just x, the derivative of the integral is the function. X plugged in, done. No need to do anything else. Don't get fancy with this. Example six. The derivative of the integral is the, is the function. It's the function with x squared plugged inside. But remember, I'm taking the derivative, so there's a chain rule. That's the derivative of the inside. Notice that there's no plus c here for two reasons. One, it's a definite integral, so there's no plus c. Second, I'm taking the derivative, so whatever constant there was disappears, because I've taken the derivative. The derivative of a constant is zero. In example seven, I have to do something. I have to adjust this. I have to switch my balance, or just know that this is going to be negative. So we get negative the square root of x to the fourth plus one. Now, question, why didn't I multiply by the derivative of the inside? Why didn't I multiply by 4x cubed? Because I'm not plugging in x to the fourth, I'm plugging in x. And the derivative of x is just one. Now, that remember, it's negative because I had to switch the balance. Constant to a function, not a function to a constant. Okay. Now, I'll show you what I mean over here. We're going to switch the bounds and make it negative. So I get the square root 3x squared plus 1 times the derivative of what I plugged in, which in this case is 6x. Oh. And don't forget that it was negative, because I had to switch my bounds. All right, so the last one uses one of the properties of integrals, and that's that the integral from 5x to x to the fourth is the integral from 5x to a constant plus the integral from that constant to x to the fourth. So I can rewrite this as the integral from 5x, well, it's the derivative of the integral. From 5x to, let's just say 0, t plus 1 dt, plus the integral from 0 to x to the fourth, square root of t plus 1 dt. Now I'm just going to do fundamental theorem on both of these pieces, keeping in mind that that one's going to be negative. So I'm going to put this one first. Square root 
of x to the fourth plus one. Now I'm plugging in an x to the fourth. So multiply by the derivative of what I plugged in, 4x cubed, minus, because I'm having to switch my bounds here, the square root of 5x plus 1 times the derivative of what I plugged in, which is 5. Answer. Again, don't make this more complicated than it needs to be. I shouldn't really see a whole lot of work with these kinds of problems. You're plugging thing in, multiplying by the derivative of what you plugged in. That's it. As long as you're going from a constant to a function. If you're going from a function to a constant, it's got to be negative or opposite. Okay. That's it for the day and that's it for the unit.